Hello and welcome back friends. So we were discussing Newton's laws of motion and uh, we were going through different types of fundamental forces. In the previous session, what did we discuss? We discussed about gravitational force, isn't it? So it was uh, Sir Isaac Newton who gave to the world uh, the concept of gravity and uh, gravity was one of the four fundamental forces available in nature. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to discuss the next fundamental force and that's called electrostatic or other electromagnetic force as well. So we will discuss about first what is electrostatic force and then we'll talk about electromagnetic force. So they are basically linked to each other and uh, the genesis of these forces is nothing but a very fundamental concept or fundamental property of matter which is called charge. So you know that you would have been doing this experiment uh, in your childhood as well where you take a comb and then rub it against your dry hair and then bring the comb to near to the uh, uh, tiny bits of paper and you will see that the bits of paper getting attracted towards the comb or the scale ruler which plastic scale which uh, we otherwise use so that's charge so what is charge my friend charge is a basic property of matter so other basic property of matter was mass you know so charge is another basic property of matter now by virtue of which they attract or repel each other right so do this experiment if you get time so you take a small balloon and uh, you know inflate the balloon and then rub it against dry hair and then uh, if the balloon is small enough you will see that when you take it to the uh, you know near the wall it will get stuck to the wall so that's the uh, you know the because of the difference in the amount of charge present on the uh, the balloon and the wall you will see there is a force of attraction now we know by our previous knowledge there are two types of charges positive charge as well as negative charge and uh, like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other this is what we have observed in nature and uh, we also measure charge in terms of coulomb so this is the unit coulomb so charles augustine coulomb was the person who gave the uh, law of electrostatics or the force of attract uh, electrostatics uh, relation so hence in his honor uh, we have named the unit of the charge as coulomb okay now you can see there are two charges positive as well as negative and they attract each other so let's say if there are two negative charges then they will repel each other and if there are two positive charges then they will again repel each other so like charges repel unlike charges attract so with this uh, property of charge now let's consider two charge particles so one is this one the left one the other one is this right one one has a charge capital q the other one has small q and let's say they are separated by a distance d between them okay so they are separated by a distance d between their two centers now this was charles augustine coulomb who came up with this observation that uh, these two charged particles if they are unlike in nature that is one positive and one negative so let me say this is my negative charge and this is let's say positive charge so they will attract each other if they are both of same nature that is positive and positive they will repel if they are again both negative and negative then they will repel again but in this case one is positive one is negative so they are going to attract each other so you can see f a b is the amount of force by which the positive charge uh, you know uh, a is attracting the charge b like that vice versa right so one force is this force is being applied by whom this force is applied by this charge here and it is applied on whom on this negative charge so this negative charge is being pulled towards the right towards the positive charge similarly this positive charge is being pulled towards the left so this is one fundamental force which is existing in nature so the moment there is charge on two particles then they attract each other or repel each other now this is charge on body a this is charge on body b so this is the description and this is d distance between a and b and this will be force on a by b and this will be force on b by a okay now let's now understand the relation between the two forces so hence like what we saw in gravitational force if you re re recall there are also the two forces with which the two bodies of some mass attract each other was equal isn't it the forces on each other applied was same similarly here 
the force applied by one particle charged particle on the other charged particle whether attractive or repulsive is going to be same in magnitude so direction definitely opposite but magnitude of the two forces are going to be the same and like what we saw in gravity again uh, here as well force is directly proportional to the product of the charges so whatever is the um, uh, charge on one and charge on the other one multiply it so force is directly proportional to that what does it mean so if you double this charge and double this charge as well so let's say if you have 2q and small 2q then what is going to happen the force is going to be 4f right so this 2 and this 2 multiplied together so force will become fourfold that's what is uh, the directly proportional mean. so here again like gravitational charges uh, gravitational force sorry f is directly proportional to 1 upon d square or f is inversely inversely proportional to square of proportional we learned this right in gravitational as well so similar behavior quite fascinating isn't it inversely proportional to d square right so hence as you increase the distance the force of attraction or repulsion as the case may be is going to go down and if you bring them closer the attraction is going to go up so you would see you know when you bring the uh, dry ruler and when you uh, you know rub it against your hair dry hair and then when you bring it closer to the particles closer enough to be able to be pulled right otherwise if you have a large distance between the ruler let's say if this was a ruler and it's let's say it is positively charged let's say and there is something which is negatively charged particles here then you have to bring them closer right bring the ruler closer to the bits and pieces of that paper otherwise if the distance is too high it is not going to attract so that's what we had uh, we have observed in our experience right now uh, if we combine all of them together so like again there's a quite similarity uh, with gravitational law so f is directly proportional now to product of the two charges so multiply the two charges divided by the distance squared right this one is similar to law of gravity and you will be astonished to know it's you know the this relation will was first of all um, uh, between uh, distance between them and force of attraction repulsion between them was given by uh, Charles Augustine de Coulomb okay so Charles Augustine de Coulomb was the person who gave this law okay and combining we can write it like that so f is k into q q by d square where k is this constant proportionality constant whose value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square this is also called coulomb's constant why because again this particular law was given by uh, charles augustine de coulomb so hence again uh, in his honor this particular value k is called Coulomb's constant again you can easily find out the units easily find out the units so if you can see k if you do the calculation k will be f into d square by q into q isn't it if you just do the cross multiplication now clearly f has a unit of newton d square will be meter square and divided by coulomb square and hence you can see this is the unit i hope you understood this part now uh, electrostatic forces act when the charges are at rest so whatever we learned in the previous case that there are two charges and they are attracting or repelling that happens only uh, when they are rest but when the charges start moving then not only the electrostatic force but there is something called electromagnetic force also start acting so what i'm saying is still the charges are stationary there will be only electrostatic force of attraction only only electrostatic right so hence the word electrostatic static anyways means at rest stationary right something which is fixed right not changing so uh, hence when the charges are at, at rest this is when they are at rest that is they are not moving right but let's say they start moving then they also start applying on each other there's some uh, something called magnetic force right so that is what uh, we will be studying deeply or you know in more detail when we do electricity and magnetism but for the time being please understand electromagnetic force again there are two forces one when the charges are stationary then electrostatic force which is given by that coulomb's law will be applicable and when they start moving for example in case of an electric current let's say there is a wire 
and it is carrying carrying a current i let's say what is current current is nothing but flow of electrons which are charges and let's say there is another electric current which is you know flowing nearby then they will start you know uh, experiencing force over and above the uh, coulomb's force which is now called magnetic force and you have heard that you know when uh, you know there was a very famous experiment which actually rev revolutionized this entire uh, you know uh, field of physics when uh, you know um, oersted a danish scientist found out that when you bring a compass magnetic compass near a conductor which is carrying current then the magnetic compass observed or magnetic compass was De deflected right so compass started deflecting the moment you bring it closer to a wire which carries electric current you can do this experiment at home also to see the deflection in a magnetic compass when it is brought near a electric current now this was given by hans christian Oersted, a danish scientist in, in 1820 he figured out and later on this particular discovery itself became the you know link between electricity and magnetism now, taking a cue from uh, Oested's uh, discovery, uh, Michael Faraday, another 19th century famous physicist, uh, you know, uh, gave the world a lot of theories, including electromagnetic induction theory. And today, the electricity which we use and uh, the 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 all the instruments or the equipment which run on electricity is you know the the genesis of all that was this discovery where uh, electricity electric current carrying conductor deflects a magnetic compass so this is another uh, force which is available in or which is you know existing in nature one of the fundamental forces so we saw two fundamental forces so far one was gravitational force another is electromagnetic force and now we are going to discuss two other fundamental forces which are called nuclear weak forces and nuclear strong forces